Restaurant Unstoppable. Inspire, empower, and transform the industry. With excitement, allow me to introduce to you today's guest, board certified entomologist specializing in urban and industrial entomology, Lori Joe Jensen. Lori, are you feeling unstoppable today? I am absolutely unstoppable. Absolutely. I, can, I cannot wait to get into, today, into today's conversation. And I know you're unstoppable because you came to me by way of Stephanie Robson. That's and correct. if she is referring people and as, as, as unstoppable as she is, if she's referring people to me, you know, they got to be good. So no pressure, but I have a <laughs> feeling you're going to blow us away with some great advice. Felt. <laughs> Today, we're talking about pest control. You're an expert on the subject. I would say you're, you're a nerd on the subject as well. Yes. And I mean that in the most endearing, loving way. I, oh, cannot, yeah. I cannot wait to dive into the subject, but let's get that motivational, inspirational ball rolling with a success quote or mantra. What do you got for us? Well, you know, this is the thing that I tell all of my uh, my students. I train uh, nationally for most large pest control organizations and mom and pops, and I get a lot of newbies in that just uh, maybe they're not sure about getting into pest control or pest management, and um, I tell them, look, you know, as with any job or in life, you can always assure success if you show up on time, you do more than anybody expects you to do, and you always ask if somebody needs help, if people need help, mm. always ask. And I don't care whether you're in pest management or you know, you're know you the sparklets truck driver or you know, you're working you know, in any profession. That's, that's the way to be successful is to always show up on time, always do more than anybody expects you to do, and always offer to help. I love that last part right there. Always offer, always see where there needs to be help. That's in my mind, as I hear you say that, I'm thinking you're creating opportunity for yourself sure. when you're asking people if they need help because they don't know how you can help them unless you open up that dialogue and say, well, yeah, I could use help with this. Like, like that's how you open up opportunities for yourself. It's not enough exactly. just to show up. It's not enough to over exceed expectation. You also need to trigger the opportunity. And I think a great way to do that is by asking people if they need help. That's such a great way to get this thing started. And on that note, uh, on that note of getting started, uh, where, like, what's your backstory? Why should we be listening to you? Why are you the person that is worth listening to when it comes to critter control? Well, you know, I have always been fascinated by insects and I initially, uh, did some work, uh, in my first grade class on mosquito control because I was deathly afraid of mosquitoes and mosquito bites. So, you know, I started at a very young age. I still have my book from when I was six <laughs> years old. This is the actual book. It's a little tiny book for those of you that don't have video. And, uh, you know, so I started learning all about insects on my own. Um, I raised butterflies and, and had all kinds of experiments going on all over the house, much to my mother's chagrin. And, uh, you know, then when I went to Cal Poly Pomona, I had, I got a degree in agricultural biology with a pest management option. Um, I've done pest management in both landscape and ornamental, done weed, weed management. Um, I have a trapping license, so I can tra trap raccoons, skunks, squirrels, uh, bobcats, that sort of a thing. Um, I've always enjoyed um, figuring out, figuring out the strategy behind the pest, not just eliminating or trying to put a band-aid on it. You want to figure out the, it's almost like CSI, you know, where are they breeding, what, where are they accessing, uh, you know, where you don't want them, that sort of a thing. So, um, and, you know, I've been doing consulting for years for, um, major corporations, um, malls, when they got fly problem in like a mall setting and all the food courts are getting inundated with flies, then they called me for an independence, uh, you know, uh, independent uh, inspection. Got so it. I, do, I do a lot of third party inspections where people think they might be getting ripped off or they're not getting their servicing done properly. I'll yeah. go in as a neutral third party. And I love what I thought was interesting when you answered, you know, how you got started. It all started out of your fear of creepy crawlers. Oh, sure. 
And um, I mean, I think that's just a little bit of great advice. If you ever are afraid of something, like learn about it, explore it. What yes. could be your biggest fear could turn into your biggest passion. I will say, if you're afraid of opening a restaurant, don't research how to do it because you might become more afraid afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Make it, it go, go home yeah. by a gas station or something. Oh yeah. my gosh. Isn't that the truth? Oh my goodness. So uh, how did you meet Stephanie? I'm just curious. How do you guys know each other? Stephanie and I met, um, we we're both horse fanatics. We both love horses. Okay. So she and I started meeting at various horse events and uh, we discovered that uh, we get along famously and she's just, a peach. I just absolutely adore her. She's probably one of the smartest people that I've ever met and just delightful, absolutely delightful. So we've been hanging out for, oh gosh, a good 30, probably 30 years now, probably 30 years we've been friends. And she has just as many great things to say about you as well. So <laughs> uh, let's just kind of get into it, kind of go big picture. Give us an overview. What, what are you hoping to cover today and how are we going to be better after listening to you? You know what? I, I think my passion is trying to educate people so that they, first of all, I mean, the whole idea of pest management is to, to prevent or um, mitigate problems with, with any, anybody's structure as far as health, um, bites, stings, um, uh, destruction of property, whether it's food or fiber. Um, and you know, the whole picture is that you, my idea here is to get people educated. So first of all, they're going to be able to tell whether or not, I know this sounds kind of awful, but whether or not they're being serviced properly, whether or not their pest management servicing is being done in a, a way that is legal. First of all, there's a lot of people that break the rules that make the rest of us look bad. Uh, secondly, that's safe and effective. And also is minimal because we have to care about our environment. We want to make sure that we're not over applying, that we're not applying as far as either over, you know, over mixing or we're not applying more often than the label recommends. And we'll also make sure we need to apply how it needs to be applied. So you're not going to broadcast something that's good, like a barrier sprayer. You're not going to just blow dust all over someplace where you're not supposed to put it. So a lot of it is just making sure that uh, both that the pests are um, taken care of, but that the people and the animals and the other elements that need to exist don't get uh, impacted. Yeah, I think that's really important too. I think sometimes we try to solve one problem by going extreme <laughs> and using some kind of like, you know, poison or whatever, and we oh, take yeah. care of that problem, but at the same time, we're hurting so much more. And I think it's in, it's respons our responsibility as business owners to do the ethical thing. But you bring up another really great point is you don't know what you don't know. And most of us getting, getting into the restaurant industry who are passionate about the restaurant world, a byproduct of having a space with all this food that we, we, we store is critters love to get in there. And we don't know that world. So yeah. what, what should we know? I guess like start there. Like what is what is normal? Like what's a normal expectation as far as when we do reach out to pest control, what should the expectation be? What is, what are, what are good price points? What are the things that should be get, getting done? Like paint that picture of the expectation for us. All right. Well, the first thing is that um, you need to have basically good communication. Choose, choose somebody that you feel communicates well that seems to know what they're doing. Now, some people are talkers, you know, you're going to get that in every industry, people that act like they know stuff and they don't, but there, you know, there are people that are excellent at communicating and that also are very knowledgeable. So you want to find a company or an individual that really is able to tell you what's going on and be able to communicate that without, first of all, without being judgmental and, um, and also to make it um, something that's um, understandable. You know, don't talk over, you know, I, I try not to ever talk over people's heads because that's, you know, they, they could talk about restaurants, like about what kind of stoves they have or what kind of refrigeration unit. And I wouldn't know. And, and I mean, I'm always interested in learning, but that's not ever a good way to have a, a working relationship. You want to make sure that people understand what, you know, 
they need to do and what you recommend. You know, they're, they're asking me for a recommendation and I try to give it to them in little tidbits. So it's understandable and digestible, but that's the ultimate is to make sure you have good communication. The other thing is to make sure you've got somebody who's licensed and that's very easy to look up. Very easy. You do not want somebody who's licensed. Also, every state has a, an association or a government agency that has a list of the licensees and whether or not they've been in trouble, whether they've had infractions, whether they've been fined, whether they've been shut down. So you can look that up very easily. And so it's a really good way to weed out a lot of uh, a lot are of the associations. Uh, are you talking about like a restaurant association? What 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 type? Oh of no no no. The state association. There's pest pest control. Uh, it, it, in California, it's the Department of Pesticide Regulation and the Structural Pest Control Board. But in every state, like in Washington, Washington State, it's run through the Agricultural Department. So you can take that person's license, type it in on the web page, and see if they've had any violations, whether they've um, had any, um, they've been shut down, or if they've had, if their license is in good standing or not. So yeah. that's a really good way to weed things out right away. So what the expectation should be, good communication. Yes. Are they going to pass judgment? Are they open-minded? You want to, yes. you want to think about these types of things yeah. licensed and are they in good standing with the state? Yes. Uh, Very you can, much you can so. All this stuff out. What about the actual expectation for like, what, what should we expect the work to be like? What work should we expect to be done? I guess. Like, where are well, we going from there? I'm sorry to interrupt you. I didn't mean to do that. Um, <laughs> so the, the, the thing is, is that you have to, okay. Another thing that is really important is you choose Someone, someone that's going to help you with your pest management, somebody that looks at each situation individually, somebody that looks at that particular site that and those particular problems, because you can't blanket statement any situation like every home is different that I go to look at every shopping mall, every restaurant, um, you know, every food establishment, they're all different and they're all going to have their unique set of problems so make sure you you know that they aren't cookie cutter in you don't let the, them generalize um, you so if they come in and they and they just kind of like generalize they don't really pull back layers they don't look around right you well specific especially you. oh yeah 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 okay now for example there's usually two types of of a um, service that you can choose there's two main groups one is called a control group and one's called an elimination group. Now, your um, the should, difference is. That, pardon me. I was going to say I should let the listeners know that today we're we're, we're planning on going deep into control versus <laughs> elimination for specifically cockroaches, flies, and rodents. Right, right. now, we're just painting the big picture. Yeah, of like, this what, is big picture. What's the big picture. Big so, if you're listening, like, when are you going to get to the good? Yeah. Like, this is good stuff. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. We're going to drill down into this stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm just things. trying to trying to tell tell you know, your average uh, or, or more of the, obviously they're above average entrepreneurs because they're listening to you. So I'd like to make sure that our audience understands that there's basically two types of service. You either buy, you know, an elimination service or you can buy a, um, a control. Now, one is going to be a lot more money than the other, but the people that if you buy into a um, control philosophy, that person usually has a schedule and they have to stay on that schedule. In other words, it's you're going to be on a route along with other stops. Now, if that person needs to take more time with you, then that reflects on their production. So you're actually going to get, in my opinion, a less customized, less, less, um, uh, not as good control or, or a service. If you've got somebody who's got to make seven or eight stops, you know, between midnight and five in the morning, you're just not going to, in my opinion, there's, you know, everything's, there's exceptions, but you're not going to get that personalized service that you're going to want. So you, what you're going to want is to do more of an um, elimination philosophy rather than a control philosophy. And it's going to so be you, that you double. believe an elimination philosophy is a better mindset than yeah. a control philosophy. Oh. One, you yes. might have to spend more upfront. Yes. However, over time, what's the, like how many visits will a control take until it meets an elimination cost, right? Like three visits, 
to, to, I, to one elimination cost? Well, for for example, now this is an older this is an older table, you know, uh, uh, as far as money is concerned or pricing is concerned. So a control charge can be anywhere from fifteen dollars to one hundred dollars a month. For that said, for an av, they say average size restaurant. Let's call it a let's call it fifty to one hundred and fifty. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Yeah. And then, but an elimination company is going to charge, charge between 400 and maybe $600. Three visits, but you're eliminating the problem. Right. And, and, but you always have to, you can't, you never sleep. You know, you always have with the, with the, the commodities that are coming in, the people that are coming in and out, shipment, shipments, just people coming into the restaurant. I mean, there was a restaurant that had bed bugs Ooh. from the people coming in and that yeah. they had bed bugs. One lady yeah. had bed bugs in her purse. And what's that cost going to be if that gets associated? Back? It's a bed bug. It, bed bugs are very expensive because it's very yeah. labor intensive. Very, very labor intensive. You're so, almost better fumigation in doing a, a tent fumigation, a whole tent fumigation. So my underlying message or, or the message I'm getting the, that you're trying to communicate or that you are communicating is really the, the you don't want to look at the ticket price because yeah. a, a control is going to be upfront. It's going to look more affordable. However, you're going to be paying to, to a long over a long period of time to, to keep something in, in control where if you eliminate the problem in the first place you'll have right. a better well recovery. how much is it going to cost you to shut your restaurant restaurant down for a day so you can get a complete clean out exactly. i mean nobody wants to do that plus it looks bad it's yeah. bad press it, it's published in the papers yeah you, you know want... you don't want that so before it's we start to little... drill down into any of these little nitty-gritty tips and details you're going to have around these these again cockroaches flies and right. rodents okay picture any other big big lessons good things to know when researching and trying to find a pest control person just just make sure that they're that they're licensed make sure that okay now this is really super important every every time they service they need to leave a list of the chemicals they used how much they used who applied them and the date and the time and all of that, that needs to be saved so that if you have um, an inspection by the health department or some other government entity, that you have proof that you've done your due diligence in trying to, uh, you know, take, right. care of your, take care of the problem. Yeah, you need, you need some kind of track record. The same thing if you yes. fire somebody, you need to show that you tried to work it out. You've communicated to them that there's a problem. And that they understand that there's a problem and that there's an expectation to improve the problem. You need to have a, tr you need to have a, a paper trail, a, a paper trail of showing your effort to, yeah. to complete the keister. But I'll some people it. don't do that. Some people don't keep their slips. Some people just throw them in a, you know, in a drawer somewhere, have Where a designated you? envelope or a designated um, uh, service. Some people have three ring binders. I put those in all of my accounts. And every time I show up, I'd sign my name. I put what time I was there. I put down what I used, which areas I treated. And then I would time out and then I would put the ticket in the pocket. And then they didn't ha even have to do anything. I did it. So it yeah. was one less step for them to do. Beautiful. Great stuff. So these are the questions. I hope you're making a checklist as we're doing this. You're writing things down as the things you should be looking for things. If, if they're, if they're leaving and they're not giving you any proof of work done, that's a, a red flag, you know, things like that or Thank things you should be thinking about. Um, so I think we can start to get into just really start to drill down into these specific verticals that you share with us again. I would love to. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be talking about <laughs> cockroaches. We're going to be talking about flies and we're going to be talking about rodents. We are back and let's start with uh, those little pain in the ass cockroaches, man. Oops. Everywhere, no matter what you do, they seem to come back time and time again. Well, Yes, they do. But you know that you could every insect. Now, this is to me, this is to me, I just this blows me away. Every insect and spider, any actually any arthropod, which is something that has an exoskeleton, a segmented body, and a jointed leg. So all arthropods are all way older than the dinosaurs. Yeah. So when you're looking at any sort of creature that has those three elements, you are looking at a living fossil. So our friends, the cockroaches have been around for many, many millions of years. There, there were cockroaches that had a wingspan of three feet at that, one point. I'm happy those guys aren't around anymore. Yeah, I'm happy too. You know, I don't really <laughs> like stepping on, I don't like the crunch noise when I step on the ones that are only two inches long. So anyway, but with, with cockroaches, they've evolved um, in certain 
obviously there's certain climates and certain ecosystems that they, they that they prefer. Now, the, the two main ones I want to talk about as far as that are going to be a pain when you when you've got a, a any, any place where there's food is the German cockroach and the American cockroach. Now the German cockroach is the most commonly found one in restaurants. This one is a smaller cockroach, maybe three fourths to an inch, uh, maybe three fourths of an inch long as an adult. And it has what I call racing stripes. So it has two parallel lines down the length of its body, like a race car. So those are our German cockroaches. Now, fortunately, German cockroaches do not fly. Thank God because German cockroaches can reproduce um, at a rate that is astonishing. They go from egg to adult in between 45 and 60 days. They come in on cardboard. They come in on uh, vegetables. They come in on, um, you know, for example, grain sacks, um, boxes, bags, that sort of a thing. And, you know, when you go down to the, um, I'm sure you're that, you know, that the people that we're speaking with today are probably very familiar with the um, market, with the, the the wholesale market, which is usually a block or two, either way. And everybody's bringing in all of their produce and all of their, um, you know, the food the food products to sell wholesale. And so you've got all of these shipments coming in from all of these different places that may or may not have good sanitation. So you know, here you dump all of these things into this giant marketplace and you're going to have these cockroaches running from maybe someplace that's not so sanitary to maybe somebody's, um, you know, produce or whatever, that they're very meticulous about it. So you can never really tell where yeah. they've come from. But that they're stat, that always stat that you in. gave us, that stat, egg to adult in 45 days, did I hear mm -hmm. that? So no matter what you do to keep up with this stuff, it only takes about if you if you eliminate the cockroach cockroach problem within forty five days, you're gonna have another problem again. You're probably gonna have somebody bringing stuff in now. German cockroaches, the any insect that has evolved codependent on man or in parallel to man, most of them have lost their their uh, ability to fly. So the rice weevil has lost its, excuse me, the um, granary weevil has lost its ability to fly. The um, German cockroach has lost its ability to fly. So there's, that kind of tells you that they're relying on man to transport them from place to place. And refrigerator units. Yes. Now remember cockroaches, you know that, that I don't know if how many of your people or you have seen the, it's kind of a little, it looks like a capsule, like a vitamin capsule. It's the egg case, it's called an ootheca. Okay. Now you think one is hatching out of those. No, every segment has two babies in it. So if you look like a, at a cockroach ootheca, it's segmented. So if you've got, if you've got, let's say here's an ootheca and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's eleven. Okay, so there's going to be 22. twenty. There's going to be twenty-two cockroaches that come out of that one thing. And uh, for our audio listeners, we do have a whiteboard behind us that we're using, and Lori is drawing a picture of the egg right now. Just sort of the egg case, the egg the case. Egg case. Uh, so just a quick reminder, we are on YouTube. If you guys want to watch any of these interviews and get the video component, you're more than welcome to. And I'll let you know whenever there's a, a video portion of the conversation coming. So, I mean, why is that significant to understand that if we see one of these things that it's more than we understand? Well, it's it. just... The thing is, is that when when you're dealing with um, something that can reproduce at that sort of an exponential rate, um, even the best restaurant or the best food handling establishment um, is, is, is it's a possibility. All it takes is one of these things. And then in two months, you've got, you know, you're doubling or tripling your uh, your population. Yeah. So it's you've got to stay on it. You can't. Well, you can do whatever you'd like. I don't recommend doing a one and done. I will always recommend a good clean. And I mean, a good clean out, a good clean out. I mean, I want somebody dusting the legs on all the prep tables, the, all the tubes that are hollow. I want somebody drilling at the bottom about, about two, you know, maybe a foot, two feet up. And, and then another down, maybe uh, go up another five feet, drill, put dust, 
put dust in there because you don't want to mess with the, you know, the electricity or you know, that sort of a thing. And you want the dust contained. Um, so many times you'll get a failure. You'll get callback after callback after callback because people are not treating the places like the, the lip that, you know, the tables that curl, the stainless steel tables have the lip that curls up. You've yep. got to treat that. You've got to treat the legs of the table. You've got to treat the, oh my gosh, the, 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 the breaker box, the, not the breaker boxes, the, the, the conduit, you know, the um, electric junction boxes. Got those it. all should be, all of those should be treated with dust. All of them. And the good thing dust. What do you mean by dust? Are you saying like the actual like chemical that you use to? Yes, it's, it's, okay. it's like, it looks, you know, it looks like baby powder, but it's, it, it, you can buy it just separate. You know, you can get a boric acid dust, which is a very low mammalian toxicity material. So it's, um, and of course, everything's going to be labeled for that application. So you, you said that. The hot spots are the lips that are curl up the, underneath. The curl the, up under the, the legs. The legs. How are we getting the dust in these legs? You've got really? a, a there, you get a little applicator. It's got a little tiny straw on it that's kind of like a WD forty can. Got it. And then you and it's got usually like a little accordion or like it's like a almost like a turkey baster. Got it's it. Got a little bulb. It goes and you go poof poof poof. And then it goes down in there. And then you, of course, you're wiping off everything. So I don't have a stainless steel table in front of me right now. I know that they usually come with those hollow legs. Are there yeah. holes drilled in those already? Um, usually there's a crack where they're attached. Um, sometimes you can drill. Drilling's a pain in the patootie. But sometimes you can take the bottoms off of the legs too and poof up. It just depends on the manufacturer. Got it. Uh, so you want to get so they live inside those legs. Oh, like, oh, oh, it's it's roach. It is a it's roach central in those. Mention one other spot. Oh, um, the, the like I said, the the junction boxes. Those are always a big problem. The uh, false ceilings. Oh my gosh, false ceilings. There, you can you can use a fog in a fox in a in a false ceiling and kind of flush them out. Uh, drink dispensers. Drink dispensers. They love drink dispensers. And the other place that roaches love are dishwashing areas the dishwasher area it makes sense it's warm usually there's hot water there's and there's food water particles food particles mm -hmm. um i know one area that is a hot spot is uh refrigerator units yes yeah they got get like to get in the motor yeah because it's warm uh mm -hmm. bio the, the it, grease is also oh food, it's great but, and they have the little the little spa underneath which is where the drip drips come down the condensation yeah, the, spa, the cockard spa i like that <laughs> It's a uh, <laughs> so when it comes to um, cleaning with this chemical that you mentioned, the spray, what's it called uh, again? Well, it, there's a variety of uh, materials. There's there's emulsifiable concentrates. There's uh, flowables, wettable powders. It depends on the application. So, for example, if you wanted to put sugar on a on a like a cake or a cupcake you would use powdered sugar but if you you, you know some people if you want to have a muffin they'll use that big granule sugar i mean it's both sugar but it's just a matter of how it's composed or how it's used in the end so the same thing is with any sort of um pesticide it's formulated in ways that adapt to the situation a dust is going to float and go into like a wall void or a soffit or um a, a kick plate under under a kitchen or in uh, any any kind of place that's contained, a, a, a outlet, electrical outlets. And then you're gonna seal those up so the dust doesn't go anywhere. And those the dust dust is permanent until until it gets disturbed. Yeah. So you only have to get that done. In other words, you're gonna pay for them to do that one time. And then they don't have to come back and do it all the time. Got it's it. just that one shot. So it just depends on the application and you can, you have very, a lot of really good products that have a very, very high margin of safety that so, have just recently come on the market that I think are fabulous. Absolutely. That was my next question is around safety. Cause like you, you're mentioning things like drink dispensers, refrigerator yeah. units. Like if you're using chemicals around these things, like that was my concern. Like, can we do this sort of thing ourselves? Are there certain tools you need to be able to do it safely? Well, you know, one thing that they can do by themselves, which I recommend highly, is mechanically cleaning the nozzles, any kind of a nozzle, any kind of making sure they're stoppering up all of their liquor, make sure that they've got that all sealed up so that the fruit flies don't get into the liquor. Maybe we started talking about the flies yet. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I, I'm just, you're talking about in general what people can do. Yeah, yeah. So for cockroaches, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to physically clean um, 
the, the, the drains, that's also for flies as well. So many of the th these things overlap. Um, you're gonna physically clean the nozzles. You're gonna check your ice machine. Um, you're, you know, there's, there's all kinds of sanitation that, that, the, that is it's actually, it works really well. Sometimes you can get rid of a pest and you don't even have to use chemical. Sometimes yeah, it's just clean. sanitation. They're just clean. And yeah. um, that reminds me, one thing that we have learned is if you're buying used equipment, really make sure that you're going through and you're not buying a, a pest problem. Definitely. Definitely. Those yes. can be real hot spots. So we're Good still, point. we're still, we mentioned the German cockroach. Uh, you got into some of the specifics about the German cockroach, how they are kind of dependent on humans. Yes, uh, they are. Their size, talk about what they look like. You mentioned the American cockroach. Is it worth going into detail on what to? If they're not going to be that big of an issue, but um, I think the reason I brought them up is because of, if a lot of people have outdoor dining, especially since of COVID, you know, since COVID, yep. um, uh, the American roach is good size. It's a good two inches long, and it's mostly nocturnal. So people would be out evening dining, and there is nothing that will put you on the bad list than a giant cockroach climbing all over somebody's foot or, or you know, coming out of the planter. Yeah. So that's something that I felt that I needed to address. Plus these things will fly. Yeah. So, I mean, are these generally in tropical warmer climates, the American no. roach in the South or they, they make up North? No. no, because the American roach comes from the sewers. Got it. Okay. Because I've been to dryer. tropical places where these cockroaches, like I, I've noticed that whenever I'm on a tropical island, there's cockroaches galore. Okay. Yeah, they've got all kinds there because because it's so conducive to you know to insects in I'm general. Yeah. So, but I mean, even for example, New York City has a tremendous roach problem, um, and 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 they and it will all, and always will because there's going to be a food source. There's going to be heating, cooling. There's pipes. There's there's basements. There's you know all kinds of good. Uh, um environment there's all kinds of good uh you know good places yeah yeah fun. anything we haven't mentioned regarding cockroaches best practices things to know ways to prevent them from coming in i think just even that little bit of information that they can come in on boxes and Which bags. Is how they usually come in yeah so no matter what you're doing to clean to keep your space clean you're every day Every other day, at least, you're getting orders of new opportunities of these suckers coming into your space. Yeah, and and the other thing is too that what if somebody wants to, they can buy sticky traps, which are like little mouse traps, and you put those any place where there's egress, um, where people are coming in and out. Um, obviously, you're going to want to hide them. You're going to need to hide them because you don't want them sitting out there where customers can see them. But um, it, you know, like the the service store or where the, you know if you've got people that that are doing uh, deliveries. You want to make sure you put some sticky traps out there and uh, make sure they're not, they don't get uh, dusty or too wet or, I mean, um, that sort of thing. Yeah. A lesson we got from Stephanie was you really want, whenever, when you're designing your restaurant, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that when food comes in or when product comes in, it, it's going to the back of the, uh, the house and it's staying yes, yes. in the back of the house. Yes. So this is a, one benefit of that is if you, if you're bringing cockroaches in and they're just staying in your, your dry unit area okay. until the places find their home you you can pull things out of boxes and put them in their home and then take whatever box it came in and get that outside you know you exactly. can throw that away immediately before bringing all that into your, your space try to keep everything at the back door so that's, you, and that's perfect i love that yes yeah. and you know and, and you know if you've got somebody uh if your crew is keeping the doors open uh with no screens on them or no air doors or anything that is just asking for trouble asking for trouble Especially so there's a lot of cultural stuff you can do like what stephanie's mentioning you know just a lot of, of good practices yeah so anything else, anything else regarding cockroaches that we need to get out nope. now no nope. let's we can move on we can move on to flies because the thing is is that there's a lot of the same practices for flies but flies um are a really a big issue with a lot of a lot of restaurants but there's some really cool things that you can do, or you can ask your pest management company so to do. Before we move on to flies, just to oh, like okay. cap off cockroaches, I'm curious. No, um, sure. I if somebody's coming in specifically, if we, we notice there's a, a problem with cockroaches and we hire a pest control or a pest eliminator to sure. come in, uh, what is the expectation of what they should be doing for just that one thing? 
Does it make sense to, to fragment these and to think of these as different issues, different infestations? Well, they all have different, yeah. It's a combination of strategies. I, I think you're spot on. I just paint that picture of what the expectation should be. So when we, we have an idea of the person that we're hiring to do this is doing it right. Well, you're going to, you, I would expect, and I'm speaking, this is if I were going to be hiring somebody to, to, to deal with my personal my restaurant. I would make sure that they're planning on using some sort of a dust in any, any sort of a void that's going to be sealed. I would want some sort of a bait that's going to be applied uh, according to the label directions because baits are wonderful. Baits are great because the cockroach, the larger cockroaches, because they're big pigs, they eat most of the bait and little baby cockroaches kind of go, I'm hungry. So then what happens is the adult or larger cockroaches they, when they defecate, when they poop, then the baby cockroaches will eat that deposit and then they'll get poisoned. So you get this domino effect. You get this one, two punch. So I definitely would do the dust. I would do some bait. I would definitely um, put in some sort of a monitor system so that when you, um, you know, for example, uh, sticky traps or glue boards or something, so that when your person comes on whatever you've agreed on as far as whatever, you know, interval that they're coming, that they can check those and you can actually look at them and check them too. And you can see what you got, how many they're coming, you know, how many there are. And then also what direction they're going. Because when they go across that sticky board, you know, then they get stuck. So are they all facing one direction, going another way? Well, then wherever they're coming from, probably the refrigerator, like you were yeah. saying, then you can say, oh, well, that's where the problem is. So you can actually judge by where they're showing up on that trap, where they're probably hatching out of. Yeah, that's good, good tips right there. Beautiful stuff. Awesome. Okay. I think now we can move over to flies. So okay. let's zoom back up to 30 feet. Give us big picture fly <laughs> control. Fly control, you're not ever going to get good fly control unless you find out where the larvae are. Um, yeah, you could go in and fog, you know, two hours before a bar is supposed to open up and you can knock a few things down, but you've got to get to the source. You absolutely. Now, cockroaches, you sometimes don't have that luxury when they first come in. You, you don't have that luxury. You know, you can go, oh, all right, well, I'm, I'm just going to do more preventative measures. But with flies, a lot of times flies will get away from you. Their life cycle is very quick, uh, between five to 10 days to go from egg to adult. I mean, that's, that's, that's amazing. House flies can go from egg to adult in seven to 10 days. So you're going to have a big problem very quickly if you don't stay on it. Now, with flies, um, I, I run into this a lot. People will say, well, I've got baby flies and I have bigger flies. Once it's got wings, it's not a baby anymore. It won't get any bigger. So what you've got is two different kinds of flies and those flies come from different sources. So you've got to figure out what the source is. For example, with house flies, it's usually manure and garbage. So there's usually some sort of a garbage, garbage problem or a manure problem, whether it's chicken manure, dog manure, or people manure, there's a manure problem. Whereas if it's a large, like buzzy metallic looking fly, those are called blowflies, that's going to be from dead animals or carcasses or meat products. So metallic so looking flies, that should be a real red flag that you have Oh, really. there's something yeah something dead something's dead whether it's or could be meat trimmings i had a i had a place that they had a horrible blowfly problem and uh the the guys were being real sloppy throwing their meat trimmings in the into the trash so there was like junk that was behind prep tables stuff behind the trash where the trash was and that's where the blowflies were coming from so the blowflies are the shiny metallic looking yes. ones and what are the other ones that you, you said we house should... flies are a big issue in in garbage and manure um the other one that people have a really big uh trouble with is um forids it's p-h-o-r-i-d they're also called coffin flies forid flies will breed in any sort of um organic matter whether it's dead animal dead um you know uh, uh, fermenting food drains sewage and they're very small and very annoying and um, very, flies, very difficult. This is the same thing as fruit flies? No, forehead flies are different. Good question. Good question. Forehead flies 
um, people think they're fruit flies, but they don't do that annoying hover. You know how fruit flies do the kind of like the kind of hover around, they kind of dive bomb your beer or they kind of start flying around and they're just annoying as hell and you go swat them and they always get away from you. Those are fruit flies. Those are, yeah, they like go neater, neater, neater. So um, fruit flies, they come in red eye varieties and dark eye varieties. So red eyes are usually some sort of pickled, pickling soy, beer, something fermented. Uh, old bag of potatoes in the back, something like that. And dark eyed fruit flies are more kitchen equipment, like a dishwasher you don't run every day. Um, you know how the dishwasher has the, the screen thingies that, that has the food particles in it? Yeah. And then the, the dark eyes usually like that. That's where they're coming from. So you're going to look and see what the hell you're dealing with. And then as far as um, your um, forids, forids um, for, fruit flies have that hover thing. And forids, they look almost like they're fleas with wings. They, they have a weird running behavior. And then they kind of jump. They look almost like they're electrified. Um, and they, they have a very large, enlarged femur on their back leg, which allows them to kind of move funny. And okay, they're so like we, hmm? we know about the blowflies. We know, and those are the ones that are metallic and will eat meat and meat. Deep yeah, matter. Thanks. We have house flies. They like garbage and manure, manure. typically. The mm -hmm. forward flies, those are the fleas and things. And they like the dishwashers. And then we have the fruit flies, which are mostly around fermentation. Right. But beer, I get it all right. Yes. Yes. Stuff yeah. Like beer, wine. Uh, a lot of times the drink, you know, funky drink dispensers or like if they, they cut up fruit for like bar drinks for cocktails and they don't change out. They only like put some new fruit on the top instead of getting the whole thing cleaned out. Then you're going to get fruit flies there, too. So what's the big concern with flies? Why should we be concerned with flies? Disease transmission. Disease transmission. Yeah, they're really big carriers of salmonella, shigella, um, uh, a whole bunch of stuff that'll cause dysentery, uh, gastrointestinal stress, distress, that sort of a thing. They're very, very uh, they're the the number one killer of mankind uh, throughout the ages has been flies. That's crazy. Um, and are, of these flies that you mentioned, the <clears throat> the house fly, the blow fly, the metallic which ones are those the blow those? flies are metallic then there's fruit flies the and fruit flies the forward flies which ones are are most concerning most alarming if we see these um in my opinion the most alarming one is the house fly because it has this annoying thing where it regurgitates its processed digestive contents onto what it wants to eat so therefore if it landed on something gross in a trash can and then lands on your sandwich um, there's a real high probability you're going to have disease transmission. So house flies, I think, are the most in the in the restaurant in the, in the restaurant industry. House flies are the number one concern. Okay, and um, let's get into kind of like what we need to know as far as preventative maintenance or elimination control or elimination. What what get into that? Well, when when you when the guys are or the girls or whomever, when the, the staff is like power washing after the end of the day, doing their sanitizing, make sure they're not power washing the food scraps into cracks and crevices in the floors and on the baseboard areas. Um, make sure the drains are foamed or gelled all the time. You gotta make sure you foam or, or because just washing junk down a drain doesn't kill the flies because the fly larvae are, are living in that, um, that substrate of goop, you know, it's drain crud, right? Well, if you just run bleach down the drain, everybody says, oh, we'll just run bleach down the drain. Those flies are used to that. Their little rear ends are sticking up in the air. They got they breathe through a butt siphon. It's like a little snorkel on their rear end. And they're eating the crud down at the front end. And then they're snorkeling with the back end. And then they feel that bleach starting to hit. And they pull their tail snorkel in and they ride it out until it all goes by. And then they kind of poke it up a little bit and see if the coast is clear. And then they go, ha, ah, and they start, you know, breathing and eating again. And you haven't done anything except run bleach down it, right? So you're going to want to use a gel or a foam. And you can do that by yourself. You don't have to count on your... Um, is there a brand, a name brand we're looking for that you that you like? There's a couple that are good. Um, um, Rockwell Labs makes one and I don't recall the name of it as now and nicest and i s u s has a really good one as well yeah, one more time nicest n i s u s nicest and you can get these things online um at, 
can you do do your own pest control do my own pest control or you can get them on amazon and they are labeled so that people that don't have a license can use them and i recommend them highly you yeah. want something that's either a gel or a foam because if you don't fill that whole drain with product then you're not going to hit all the flanges the back you know where all the, the little cutoffs are and all the the um so as far as preventative maintenance, the big things I'm pulling from you are pay attention to cracks. Don't when you're, you know, look at the corners of like, especially underneath appliances, but oh, sometimes you just kind yes. of get pushed back there or push back there with a broom. You don't, you want to really make sure the crevasses are cleaned out. And um, also yes. drains are big. Problem. Drains are big. Now, this is another thing. This is another handy tip that um, you can do on your own is you go ahead, go to, you know, Home Depot or whatever, get some mouse sticky glue boards and little, you know, a rat, whatever, glue boards. Make sure they've got a little tray. You don't want the flat, you don't want the flat ones with the tray. You put it up upside I don't want down. The flat ones. What's wrong with the flat ones? Yeah, because they're going to stick to the drain and then you're going to have to, all oh, this glue you're going oh, to have to gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You want to have, you want to have the glue in a little tray so that when you turn it upside down, which is what you're going to do, you put it upside down over half the drain. So let's, as soon as, if somebody go, people are going home, right? If, if you're not a 24 hour restaurant, right? People go home. Yeah. So the last people out the door, take the sticky trap, put it halfway over, put one trap over halfway over all the drains, all you the floor drains. Like a little crescent moon stick of the yes. drain. Sticking out. Yes. And then, and then first people in to make sure that they remove those sticky traps so that people don't step on them and get them stuck that are shoe or trip over them and then you can look and you can see which drain has the flies that are coming out of it and then you save that for your pest control person or you take a picture of it with your phone they all have phones and then you can say i have this particular fly coming out of this particular drain now you don't put it over all the way because you want light and air to pass so they didn't they know where to go. So they can go, they know where and how to get the hell out of the rain. You know how to get discovered. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that works with, really well. And that with those sticky traps that. with the little, like, um, you know, the little, in the light. they're not flat. Um, is there a name product that you know of that we can like Google search these and order them? As online? far as the, as far as the traps you put upside down over yeah. the drain. Um, I believe, um, I think Eaton, E-A-T-O-N, Eaton, uh, um, there's another one that is uh, Victor, Victor, V-I-C-T-O-R. Um, there's also- uh, Victor does apply the rodent control too, right? Yes. Well, that, yeah, they're double, double duty. You put them upside down over the drain for the flies and you can leave them six, sitting up for both roaches and, and rodents. Got it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you can just buy those things in a big old box and- I'm just trying to make it easy for the listeners right now. If they're like, oh, I yeah. want to do that. I'm going to go on Amazon right now and order some traps. These are some keywords you can use to find the traps that we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, so regarding back to flies and where to sure. look, we mentioned the crevasses with the food and the cracks, yes. and the, sure yes. the spots and the drains, where else are we, should we be looking to make sure that we don't have flies? Well, you know, a lot of times um, people, especially if they're not very, um, focused on on sanitation you'll have problems with um especially trash areas storage areas, trash areas tr you know garbage chutes if you have a garbage chute um you know any sort of um dumpster that's outside now on dumpsters there are some stuff there are things that are labeled for um they're a plastic it's a plastic strip that's impregnated with, with chemical now i don't know if they're labeled for i don't know if they're labeled for you know, average over the counter use, but your pest management company should be able to do that. And you can put them um, on the dumpster lids. And then when you close the dumpster lid, they, they, they gas off and they'll kill the flies as they're hatching out of the gook. So there's all kinds of really cool ways. There's, there's fogging machines that do a fabulous job that, you know, it clears, it clears the, all the flying insects out. And then you open the doors, air it all out. And then you know, that'll, that'll keep people from getting bug, bugged, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh. Uh, the other thing that's really cool that I forgot to tell you about is there is a spray on bait for flies. Now you put it in a little sprayer and I think you can get this over the counter. I'm not sure, but I think you can. And I think, I, what's it called? I can't remember. 
I should have done my research. I didn't know I was going to have to come up with brand names. Um, so anyway, but you, it's a bait and it's clear and you put it in the sprayer, you mix it according to directions, and then you put it on any place in the morning that gets sunlight, all your exterior south facing walls. And then, because flies have to get up to about 55 degrees before they can even fly, their muscles are all so they can fly. So then they'll climb up to get all like sun, like a bunch of lizards. And then the bait is clear, so you can't see it, but they go mm, nummy, nummy, num, num. And then they <laughs> eat the bait while they're like sunning like their little lizardy selves. And then they, it's so fun to watch them. They, I sound awful. I sound just awful. They fall down on the ground. definitely a nerd, but I love I it. I know, I know. <laughs> and then you know what they do? They fall down and then they're on their backs and all they do is beat their wings pathetically. So they go in little spirals, like little twirly whirly gigs all over the place. And they're all like twirling and whirling and then they die. And then you just vacuum them up or sweep them up or blow them into the bushes. So this, this uh, I, I Google search spray on bait for flies and I yes. got Wonder Side, uh, Wonder Side uh, Floatron, Solo Mist, PT Alpine. PT Arian. Alpine's fabulous. Is that the one you're? You, you, you I love that stuff. That's PT, like the letters PT, then Alpine, A L P I, and like an Alpine forest. Yeah, if you guys are interested in looking that up. Um, anything else on flies? Uh, just, I'm just sure you got. You can't let you. It's just the same thing as German cockroaches. You know, you get, let them get away from you, and you're gonna be paying. You're gonna be paying a lot more money if you. The more you put it off, you know, it's like anything else. You've got a health problem. The more you put it off, the worse it's gonna cost when yeah. you finally go to the doctor. It's the same thing. You know, you're calling somebody that's basically a doctor for your restaurant for its pest problems. Got it. So the big takeaway there is just if you if you're looking get to solve a problem, eliminate it. Don't control it. Yeah, get on it. Get on it right away. Beautiful. Oh, okay. those little, those yeah. funky, like if you've got, I got to tell you about this really fast. <laughs> there's these it. things, there's the, they, they, they're like, look, look like a, the, the kind of all like an obliascora. It's like this, it's a tri, a log, tall, tri, triangular thingy. And it's got two flapper doodles that have, op, um, they look like rainbow, you know, they're, they look like a CD, they, they're like rainbowy. I think. Yeah, like, like, yeah, I got you. The optic like, kind of yeah. thing. And then you turn their battery operated in, or their solar and you, turn them on and they put them on the table where the people's food is and it and it disorients the flies so the flies can't land on the food really yes they're awesome what's what's that called do you know what the, the name is um called? i would put what would i call them we can uh, edit this out too. fly uh, give me uh, key words to search hey, tabletop fly um uh tabletop fly repeller Pellant. I would not a fan. No, it's, a, it's a, like a little fan. You turn it, it on. They're awesome. Um, are you trying it to was, like? Do they literally spin like with two little arms? Yeah, there's like yeah, there's two little arms like a propeller. It looks like a helicopter. Yeah, I think I it, flying it mosquito goes, pest repellent fan. Buy one yeah. get one. Uh, fly away products. Yeah. Yeah. There's fly. several several there. You can get them. They're not cheap. They're not expensive. They're they're very inexpensive. I think I'm just going to copy and paste this to you. This okay. is wonderful. Boom. Let me know if that's and they're, and they're really cool. Yeah, let's look here. Yeah. Flyway is what it's called. I think it's what we're talking about. Let me look. Here. About. Let me look. Up. Yep, that's yeah, and that's one brand. There's several of them. So, that, so yes. So the brand you're talking about, I think, is Flyaway. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's but there's several. It, it doesn't really matter. But they they work. They look. You think this is stupid. This isn't gonna. No, work. I'm not gonna lie. I, I feel like some people might look at that and go, "Well, that's tacky. Do I really want this fucking fan?" Part of my language. Do I really want this no, fan no. <laughs> in my night table? Well, but the thing is, is that you what what I've seen done because I live here in wine country, Temecula wine country in in uh, Southern California, and what I see is that the wineries give them as an option. Would you if you if you would like to to take this little fan to your table, then you will not have, you know, it'll deter the flies. What is flies if you don't want to use it, then you right? don't have to. Pardon me? Fall's fly season generally, right? Um, no, no, no. Flies will start up anytime when it's over about 45 to 50 degrees, maybe a little bit higher than that. 
I'll six, tell you where my mind's going right now. I'm about to hit up Flyway to see if they want to be a sponsor. And I'll be like, whoa, you know, Flyway. You know what? That, you know what? You are a genius. Yeah. <gasps> always thinking. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Oh, that's such a good idea. Also, too, um, since mosquitoes are flies, they are part of the dipterin order. Yeah. Um, if you have a place that's got a mosquito issue or some, you know, people are trying to eat and it's mosquitoes, just Get some cheap box fans or some stand fans and then run those so that there's a light breeze. Mosquitoes get all messed up. They can't maneuver because they only have two wings and these two little like barbell things that they're called halteers. They look like little maracas and yeah. they act as a gyroscope. So if the you put fans up, they go, whoa, whoa, yeah. <laughs> and they can't land. For the record, if any of you guys have chosen not to watch the video portion of today's episode, <laughs> you're missing out on the uh, characteristic, or what, what am I trying to say, the animation. That <laughs> All right, so, so one more quick break. Unless there's anything else you want to tell us about, why we move on to rodents? I think I could. All right, one more quick break. We'll be right back to talk. All righty. We're back and we've covered rodents. We've cut, co- we haven't covered rodents. We've covered flies. We've covered cockroaches. And now we're about to cover rodents, these furry creeper crawlies. Uh, sometimes they're not furry though. I, they're, they can be bald ones, can't they? Well, there's naked mole rats, but I don't think you're going to find them in the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to. You know, and you don't want them around when you're frying bacon or anything because you're just going to burn. <laughs> so let's get into it. <laughs> Cover rodents. What do we need to know? Go again, zoom up to 30,000 feet, start a big picture and zoom in. Well, there's rodents have coexisted with man since they they both, you know, since rodents and man decided to exist on the earth. And uh, there's three, what we call commensal rodents. Now commensal means they want to take advantage of man. Technically that is not the definition of commensal. Yes, I know. But the way I explain it to people that, just need to know what the heck's going on and how to get rid of it. There are three main commensal rodents. These are rodents that want to eat our food and want to live in our structures. They do not want to live out in the field with the deers and the antelopes and all of that stuff. They wanna be in your house or in your structure and they wanna eat your food. The three commensal rodents are Norway rats, which are large, short tail, small ears, small eyes. And then there are roof rats, which are more slender, more athletic, long tail for balancing and large ears and large eyes. What was that last one, the name of that? The first, the first one is in Norway and the second one is a roof, like, as an, a, a, like a roof on a building. Got it. Now, the reason they're called Norway is, uh, that's a long story, but they they burrow. They go underneath the ground. That's where they're going to live. They're going to live uh, in their burrows in the ground, like a, a ground squirrel or a gopher. And then, then the roof rats, the way that they're called roof rats is because they like to live in attics or around trees of uh, vegetation, ivy, creeping fig, uh, bougainvillea, that sort of a thing. Okay. So, and then third the, the third commensal rodent is the house mouse. Now, people will trap, they want you to live trap them. They'll go, well, just turn them loose in the field. Well, they'll come back. They come right back. They don't <laughs> want to be in the stupid field. Yeah. They don't want to be where the deer mice are and the roof rat of uh, the wood rats are and all that. They this might be, be embarrassing for me to admit, but I'm going to admit it anyway. In my last apartment. Uh oh. And my apartment was the basement of an old farmhouse. Oh, how cool, though. It was a big studio apartment. I just moved out two months ago. I love my new spot. I killed 26 mice between October and December. So, but I noticed that once, so I noticed they all, they all seem to want to come in when it starts to get cold. Sure. Well, wouldn't so you? Are they living out in fields? Otherwise, no, they- no, 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 no. They're 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 just living in parts of your hat. You think they aren't in there, but they're in there. They're just maybe they're going just outside hanging to get out. Their food, yeah. not necessarily. They go outside and they come back, but they don't. They use your house as a home base. They don't. The home range, a home range of any animal means how far it will go for food and water. Got so it. a home range on a house mouse is only twenty feet. So wherever you were catching those mice, they live within twenty feet. That's crazy. So there were 20 mice living within 
Yes. 20 yes. feet of my yes. Yes. closet yes. door. Yes. So yes. The, the basement of this old farmhouse, there's basically uh-huh. like the old original wall, like the cellar wall. And yeah. then there's space between the cellar wall and the actual apartment wall. And basically it's wide open. And it, there's so many cracks and like ways for it, things to get into this old farmhouse. I'm not saying that the homeowner was sloppy or anything like that. It's just an old it's farmhouse. Construction. It's just the construction yeah. of it. You know, because my two months. I, but you know what? They're probably you know when the ones you catch. You know, you didn't catch anyway. Do you know that mice mice can breed at the age of six weeks? That's inappropriate. Then they have be- inappropriate. <laughs> this is wrong. Um, they can they can breed within. They can breed when they're the age of six weeks, and then they will have only a gestation, which means they you know that's how long their pregnancy lasts is under three weeks. That's crazy. sometimes down to two. Yeah. So, so can you imagine the churning that's going on as yeah. far as it's crazy. Yeah, it's so, okay, so I kind of derailed our train. No, no, no. I'm just saying you're lucky you got as many as you did. Cause you're I know, but I noticed that like once, but like I was killing two, three days sometimes mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and it was all at once. And then I noticed at a point it just stopped. Well, you probably took the wind out of their sails. You don't know how long they were there. I mean, they were just a relatively new because a lot of times they'll come like if there's somebody that does some construction or you know that sort of a thing they will relocate from house to house okay so i mean are they smart if they come in and see one of their dead no. bodies and like i'm out like they're a mouse stupid trap, as like, a dumber okay. than a box of rocks I mean, they figure out those those mazes pretty well so you know uh-huh. no those are rats <laughs> that figure out the mazes because oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. mice are dumber than a dryer lint has a higher iq okay <laughs> so let's start getting into like um we, we identified three different types of mice. We have house mouse. We have commensal uh, rodents. Commensal rodents. Thank you. The three types of commensal, commensal rodents. rodents. They want to take control of man. Yes, they want to. They want to. They want to preload. And we have the, the Norway rats, which are the the, the narrower eyes, shorter tail, roof rats, bulky. which are bulky, like a little like meat meatloafs. Yes. Uh, roof rat, which is a long tail, bigger eyes, and then the house mouse, which is pretty straightforward. It's a little mouse. Yes. Um, okay. Now, anything else we need to know about, cause you didn't really get into the deep dive. I mean, I think a house mouse is pretty easily, if it's a small rat, it's a mouse. Uh, no, cause the baby, there's baby rats that are the same size as mice, but baby rats, the way you tell the difference between a baby rat, whether it's a Norway rat or a roof rat is the way you tell is it's like, it's got a big head and big feet, just like a puppy. You know, you buy a puppy dog a baby baby dog and it's got a big head and big feet and then it grows into the head and the feet same thing with a rat the rat baby is going to have a big giant head and big giant feet whereas a mouse is going to have this very uh proportional size proportional got it and remember too that rats are super smart and mice are dumb really damn dumb Okay. You want to catch mice, you move the traps around because they'll go, they'll like, if you don't catch them the first time, you move the traps around, they'll go, well, that's something different. And then they go had, over and then they look at I had it. like four, at one point, four traps in the same closet and I would have two or, or three traps being set off within 24 hours. Oh, next yeah. to each other. And I was like, you guys aren't figuring this out, are you? No, no, but, no. Just, let's move away from my, my own. Oh, oh no. I think it's fascinating. <laughs> now remember too, if they won't take, if they don't take the bait, like if there's, if it's a too food rich environment, then you take a cotton ball and you take a piece of dental floss and you tie that onto the trap and then you put it out and they will take the cotton, well, they'll try to take the cotton ball for nesting material. Uh, so that way you can get around that hole, but they don't they turn their nose up at peanut butter or whatever. Or a raisin. They love Slim Jims, by the way. If you're trapping rats and, rats and mice, Slim Jims with Tabasco with, sauce on it. With, with Tabasco sauce. Yes, that's what they like. It's important. Make sure awesome. you get extra Slim Jim because when you're chopping them up, you're going to want to eat one yourself. I would definitely. Like <laughs> so, okay, look, where what, what can we do? Where should we look, be looking? Let's talk about control. What can we be doing? Okay, so what's your first best thing to do, first of all, is exclusion. So, so exclusion means you're going to plug up the holes where they're getting in or how they're getting around, let's say your restaurant. So you're gonna be using screening, you're gonna be using hardware cloth, you can be using, there's this wonderful product called uh, Excluder, it's X-C-L-U-D-E-R. It comes in a roll with tin snips and gloves, 
and it it's like Brillo, only it doesn't have any soap in it and it's stainless steel so it won't rust. And you just pull it out like a toilet paper roll and then you cut it off and you cram it in the hole where the rodent is coming through. Now, people like to use spray foam, like expanding foam. That rodents chew right through that. Right so through. What is it about the um, excluders? Because it has that metal texture? Yeah, they don't, they don't, yeah, they don't like to chew on that metal. It, 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 it's like chewing on um, aluminum foil. Now, I've heard Brillo pads, just literally, literally putting Brillo. Like you can do that, but Brillo pads rust. Yeah. So let's say you're putting it around something on the outside of your beautiful stuccoed building or your building you've put all this beautiful, um, you know, facing on. And then there's like a, a pipe or conduit or, or some sort of utility that's coming out and you stuff Brillo in there. You can get a big old rust stain down at the side of the building. Good. Whereas know. if you use excluder and I don't get paid for this, I just because I love it. I use it all the time. But you just cram and you can cut it to whatever size you want. So remember, mice can get through a crack a quarter of an inch or size of a dime. That's crazy. Both rats can get through a half an inch and a size of a quarter. That's 25 crazy. cent piece. If they can get their head in, they can get their whole body in. Now, remember, mice and rats are very uh, bad, have very bad eyesight. So they feel with their, um, they have things called vibrissi, which are long guard hairs that allow them to guide themselves through uh, the, where, they're, where they're running, you know, where they're hanging out. And um, you can always tell if it's a long-term infestation. This is something that an owner of a, of a restaurant or any home, any, any structure, um, rodents are very um, greasy. They have greasy fur, very greasy fur. And so wherever they're going in and out, in and out or up and across or across the wall, like on the side of a wall, like a, like a, where a wall joins a floor, there's going to be a brownish gray grease stain. So that is where you can tell where they're hanging out. That's where you're going to put your traps. And remember, you always butt the trap against the wall with the bait next to the wall because they don't want to be out in the open. When they remember, they don't see very well. They want to be next to something, some vertical thing, so that they have a way that they can um, navigate without having to look very hard. So Great that's tip. a good. I think that's a good tip myself. So as far as ex so, uh, exclusion is the what the the best exclusion is the key. You've got holders, to exclude using the excluder and that's excluder um, hardware -E cloth. -E hardware cloths, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, pieces of wood. What the hell? I feel like yeah. rodents are pretty straightforward. I mean. If you got food out and, uh, and available, they're going to try to get it, yes. right? It's, it's not right. hard to figure out. So, oh, yeah. so excluded. So blocking holes also are your grains and things put in containers that. Yeah. You got to make sure they're metal because they'll chew through plastic. Okay. Metal containers. Anything else yeah. we can know? Um, just make sure that, that, that your stock, your staff isn't throwing the food out in where You've got your, like, if you put the bait stations, those little black bait stations, they're plastic and they've got a hole on either side and it's a baffle. And then you put, an, usually anticoagulant bait there. Um, if your staff is throwing like the bread that people don't eat out into the alley, the rodents aren't going to eat the poison in the stations. So you've got what's called bait competition. So make sure that your staff is disposing of things properly and they're not just throwing them out in the, you know, in the back behind where you've got you know, stuff going on. So where you have your bait, your poison, you don't want to have other options. No, you don't have, you want to, you don't, that's called bait competition. You do not want bait competition. Got it. For example, we get a lot of roof rats out here in California and they love like fruit. They like avocados. They like oranges, lemons. So if you let the fruit fall on the ground, or if you let the fruit, fruit ripen on the tree, the rodents have no um, reason to even go in your bait stations. None. There's, there's plenty of good stuff here. What, you know, you're going to eat old waxy piece of bait or you're going to eat a, you know, a delicious orange. Exactly. You know, so. So, I mean, I think we covered, okay. I, I don't, I don't know. We, you tell me what else haven't we talked about with rodents? No, just basically exclusion and sanitation for just, and remember rats cannot live without water. Mice can. So if you can eliminate their water source, they're going to go someplace else. Got it. And I think really just like, again, Anything, any hole that's a quarter, a quarter or, size for or, rats, or larger for rats, or a dime, or a dime for mice. That is crazy for mice. So, like, we'll you, get might, in there. you might be going around looking for like really obvious holes, 
really he, look for yes. like any yes. little crack. Any, any. It's like there's no way that a, a mammal is getting through that. Oh, no, no. They can get but, their head. Remember, if they get their head through, they can get their whole body through. Yeah, and like really pull things apart and look around and try to find any way that they're getting in. I think that in itself is probably a project. Yes. Exactly. And, and you'll, and, and it'll make, it'll make so much difference. Now, remember, you got to make sure your staff doesn't leave like the door open all the time, because then what, you know, you excluded all these holes and cracks and crevices and the doors open. So you got to be really careful about that. Too. Anything we should be looking for. I mean, I, turds are probably the best. My, my if they're, if they're blunt turds, they're going to be um, Norway rat. If they're pointed at the ends, it's going to be roof rat. So we're saying a blunt turd. What yeah, like a capsule that? shape, like a vitamin capsule. So like a, so like yeah. an eraser. Yeah, only longer, like two <laughs> like erasers. A, like a chalk, like a chalkboard eraser. eraser. Yeah. Like a, yeah. it's rectangular. Yeah. It's a that that is the Norway turd. Yeah, that's going to be the Norway turd. And if it's and if it's a like if a it's loaf tapered, of bread, if it's a tapered if it's a, if it's a nice, turd. If it's a nice, if buttholes aren't slamming, yes. then it's a roof rat. It's a roof rat. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this right now. Oh. Hey, I could talk about turds all day long. <laughs> and uh in the mouse pretty small. It's mouse is small and, and they're called they they kind of they can be pointed and a little curved or so they can be straight. Now you can also um American roach poops can look just like mouse poops, but American roach poops, their um their anus has um protuberances on it, and then when they extrude the poop out, it makes striations on the poop. So if you look at them under a oh sorry from the listeners right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 and remember, bat poop looks like mouse poop, only if you take it between your fingers and you rub it and it's sparkly or glittery, then that's bat. Interesting. I don't know how many of you guys that. are rolling turds between your fingers. <laughs> if you do, if that's your thing. I've been a turd roller from way back, you know, <laughs> one of my things. Oh man, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, oh, Lori, I know. All right. Well, if anybody has any questions or anything, you know, you're going to give yeah. them my answer. On that note, uh, let's let the folks know how how can we connect with you. So, what is the best way to connect? If we're we have questions, we have uh, we want to maybe join you for I don't know. It, or if you if you want anybody to be, it, you know, if you want me to train anybody, mm -hmm. I mean, if you got somebody that you want to like put in charge of pest control at your facility as far as you know checking the traps or how to place things yeah no that's not a problem my um my email it is laurie joe jensen it is l a u r i e j o j e n s e n and that's at gmail.com so it's l a u r i e j-o-j-e-n-s-e-n -E -E at gmail there's no dots no dashes no nothing no numbers yeah. and um lori did say that uh, she's going to put together a special checklist for all of our listeners so if you guys it's a treat. Want this, if you want this checklist uh make sure you head over to restaurant unstoppable.com slash six eight seven this is episode 687 we'll have a, a the the link to the pdf right in there and i'll even try to figure out a way to do like a pop-up so it's hitting you right in the face where you you can get that pdf um just head over again again it's restaurant unstoppable.com slash 600 sorry dyslexia is flaring up again it's 867. <laughs> uh we will have that that checklist for you and again uh, it's laurie joe jensen at gmail.com we'll have that in the show notes any social handles you want to drop on us you want know, instagram or linkedin or facebook i you know what i uh i i'm old-fashioned i just talk to me with my email or or i know here's here, here's my phone number if you want to call me it's 949 oh there we go. Four, four one two. Is that okay? Yeah. As okay. long as you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. Eight seven seven three. So nine four nine four one two eight seven seven three. Text me first because I train all day. And then um, if you want to make arrangements for some sort of consultation or you need some advice or if you have a picture of a bug you don't know what the heck it is, you can always text me pictures of bugs. I love pictures of bugs. Yeah. And I'm going to try the, the products and services that were mentioned today that are on Amazon. I'm going to try to find those links and link okay. for you for you guys so you can find them easily. And that supports the show. Thank you in advance. And I think that's everything we have to mention. Just I want to say thanks again for you taking the time to join us to tell us all about these, these creepy crawlies and critters. Uh, that I mean, this isn't a sexy conversation, but it's an important conversation. And, it's, and important. These are it's, 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 you know, health and safety is, you know, 
important an important an important to- topic. Absolutely. Important. Lori, thank right. you so much. There it's is no delight. You are All right. unstoppable. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.